And Dora is a dual output microphone. She's literally two microphones in one body. And Dora has a dual diaphragm capsule that lets you capture sound from both sides of the microphone. Internally, there are two identical microphone circuits that output via a single 5-pin XLR breakout cable. This lets you do some interesting things after you record, which is what this video is all about. The simplest use is to have a vocalist or instrument on either side of the microphone. But the real magic comes in when you combine the two sides in different ways to change the microphone pattern in post. Let's do a quick review of microphone response patterns. First, we have Omni, which is short for omnidirectional, meaning the microphone picks up sound equally from all directions. Next up is Cardioid, a heart-shaped pattern that picks up more sound from the front than the rear. By default, the two sides of Endora are both cardioids. Before we go into the variations of these, there's one other factor to consider. It's called distance factor. It is a measure of the distance between a sound source and a microphone where the amount of direct sounds and the reflected sounds is equal. If you want to change the amount of direct sound, you move the microphone closer or further away. You won't find this number on a spec sheet as it is totally dependent on the surroundings. If you are in a highly reverberant space like a cathedral, it's going to be short, but if you're outdoors, it's going to be pretty long. There's one thing we can do to change the distance factor with everything else staying the same. We can change the microphone pattern. It turns out that a cardioid response has 1.7 times the distance factor as an omni microphone which then brings us to the hypercardioid and supercardioid. Supercardioid has a distance factor of 1.9 and hypercardioid of 2.0, which is why you might want to use these while recording. Then there's also figure eight or figure of eight mic pattern that equally picks up sound in front of the microphone and behind the microphone, but rejects sounds perpendicular to the microphone. Finally, there's a pattern called subcardioid or wide cardioid. This is anything less than cardioid, but not quite full omni. Confused yet? Don't worry about it. We'll see how to both create these patterns and why you would want to. Let's talk about creating them. There are two means of doing this, mechanical and electrical. Most microphones with small capsules use mechanical means of ports, vents, and dampening behind the capsule diaphragm. This is the Sheps patent from the early 1960s describing one methodology. Kind of cool, but not what we're going to do. I kind of chuckled when I read the patent. Carl Sheps describes this method as better than existing electrical means because the circuits of the day didn't have enough frequency response, so his mechanical means was an improvement. Really? Okay, focus, Jules. Large diaphragm capsule microphones do this electrically. They take the signal off the capsules and then either add them in phase or out of phase to achieve the desired result. You've probably seen the switch on the side of the microphone that accomplishes this with the little pattern designators. Cardioid is the easiest as you don't even use the rear capsule at all. Omni is an equal mix of the rear signal in phase. Finally, figure eight is an equal mix of the rear out of phase. For those patterns, all you need is a switch. For the cardioid variants, however, you need to adjust the mix of the rear signal. It turns out that being able to continuously variable the mic pattern is quite useful. Endora is not the only dual output microphone out there. Interestingly, I wanted a mic that could do both figure eight and omni. And as an avid DIY guy, my biggest challenge with doing this was sourcing switches and the little mechanical parts to make it not just work, but to look decent. It was actually easier for me to add an entire second set of electronics in the mic body and bring out both signals via a 5-pin XLR connector. I do all my mixing in Audio Mayhem and Reaper, so that's where we will create our mic patterns. First, bring the front and rear audio in on separate tracks. Now all you need to do is set the level of the rear versus the front. For Omni, mix it in phase and equal level. Wide Cardioid is in phase but less than a full mix. For cardioid, no rear signal at all. Now for the other ones. First step, reverse the phase. Raise the level of the rear signal. Hypercardioid is about 10 dB down on the rear and supercardioid is about 4 dB down. For figure eight, equal levels. Okay, Jules, this is all interesting and yeah, kind of cool, but why would I want to do it? In the studio, 
I just pick out a microphone with a pattern I want, and of course, move the mic around until it sounds good, and then I press record. Well, yeah, you can. However, the real magic happens when you put two of these microphones together in a stereo configuration. Quick review of stereo mic techniques. First, coincident arrays like XY, Blumline, which we'll see are actually the same thing, but use different mic patterns, and mid-side or MS. Then we have space pairs, which are just two microphones spaced 50 centimeters or further apart from each other. Finally, near coincident arrays, such as ORTF, NOS, and similar setups. These are actually my favorite. Ever wonder why ORTF is exactly 17 centimeters and each mic face is 55 degrees outward? I did. The NOS is 30 centimeters with each mic facing 45 degrees outward. I've wondered about that one too. DPA Microphones has an excellent web page dedicated to the spacing and angle of various microphones to use in various distances and angles. All of these methods rely on three things. The distance between the microphones, which causes a time difference in the signal, the angle of the microphones towards the sound source, and the pickup pattern of the microphone. Those last two kind of tie together and we'll see that. Visually, you can see the first two. The patterns, however, you cannot. All right, enough history. What if we use two dual output microphones and a near coincident pair? Then we can easily adjust the patterns and posts from full omni to actually reversing them and capturing the audience. This is easily accomplished with two indoors. Let's visualize what's happening here. First, we need an orchestra record. And, well, we might as well have a conductor as well, too. Well, he's going to be in the way, so let's move him down here. Let's get two microphones in here, 17 centimeters apart, facing plus or minus 55 degrees. We'll start with each one as an omni microphone. Pretty much both mics equally cover the orchestra with any stereo effect now due only to the timing differences between the right and the left microphones. Now, let's morph into a cardioid. This is the classic theoretical ORTF response. Now you can see the overlapping coverage of both mics and where each one picks up its side of the orchestra. Did you notice the overlapping coverage change? All right, let's keep morphing the pattern. Notice the overlapping coverage gets smaller. This is pretty cool, and there are lots of use case possibilities here. All right. How does it sound? Well, I got a chance to record a choir using this technique recently, and let's bring up the Reaper session and listen. First, let's look at how I set this up. I have two groups established, the front of the microphones and the rear of the microphones. I use lead and follow linking so that changing level, phase, mute, or solo will match the front mic with the other front mic and the rear mic with the other rear mic. Okay. Let's listen, and I'm going to put text up to show you what is changing so you can hear without me talking. You really want good headphones or good speakers for this part.
Alright, I hope you enjoyed this video showing you how to use two Andorra microphones and a stereo configuration, the classic ORTF. There are many other uses for this and I will be following this up with a video on MS and double MS using Andorras. Have a great day.